Okay, Najee, in this video, I wanted to start off by doing a controlled extraction to determine how much metal we should expect per gram out of this e-waste that you sent. So out of 55 grams in a controlled setting using a oxyhydrogen torch, an electric one, I was able to extract 9.4 grams of metal I believe I may have accidentally cooked some of it by overheating it with the oxyhydrogen torch. But nonetheless, I am going to turn this into an ingot. I just don't have any ingot molds at the moment. So I also wanted to examine how hard it is to melt this stuff. And it turns out it has an extremely high melting point. So what I'd like to do is use this as a benchmark. Can we do better or worse than this? Okay, Najee, this is the oxyhydrogen torch that we're going to be using to melt the samples. I told you about this, I believe. Um, the flame this thing produces can melt the platinum. Um, we may be able to make a small furnace using one of these cells to process this sponge material that you gave me. We may need to make a small furnace specifically for running the e-waste because of the high temperatures required for the platinum. I don't know yet, but anyway, from what research has indicated, using a oxyhydrogen torch is very good for performing the melt process, so. So this is about 2,000 watts of power we were cranking into this thing. Substantial amount of gas production. There are four tubes just like this pumping gas at that same rate. So it is a lot more gas than it looks. And we are still having difficulty melting this stuff. The fire brick, in my opinion, melts easier than this stuff did. That is just blazing white hot. Okay, Aji, so the purpose of this experiment was to examine the melting point of this material. And it, come to find out, has a very high melting point. As you've seen, we were able to boil fire brick, or a, it may have been a 2400 degree refractory, um, with no problem. So you're probably looking at well over 3000 degrees and this stuff is just extremely difficult to melt. Typically a hydrogen torch can um, melt anything with ease and the fact that it was so hard to do tells me that there's a subtle chance that your larger induction furnace just doesn't have a high enough melting point. And I believe the melting temperatures are adjusted by the frequency. I'm not sure of that, don't quote me, but from what I've read, that's one of the things they do. So. From what I've seen, the e-waste is extremely difficult to melt. We are going to take this crucible. This is a quartz crucible, I believe. Way off. This is a ceramic alumina crucible. We're going to give this thing a shot. And we will be running that in this direct flame impingement foundry. This burns a little bit hotter than your average cyclone. Um, the flame impinges directly on the crucible itself. And it's set in such a way that the flame tip is just touching the crucible. So it's kind of like when you take a blowtorch and you're trying to braze something. And if you hold the torch at just the right spot, it's the hottest point of the blowtorch. And you're able to melt your braze alloy. That's kind of what we're going for with this foundry. It's... Um, should be over 3,000 degrees. We're going to check that out and see if we can melt this crucible. 
Okay, Najee, everywhere I have looked indicates that it is best to extract the aluminum from the e-waste before any further processing. I don't know if it alloys or something. I'm not sure what happens with it. If it messes up the acid rinse, um, large amount of hydrogen production will take place if you put that stuff in acid. So maybe that's what it is. And then you've got the aluminum hydroxide maybe. I'll have to look into the chemistry of that. But um, we still end up with the alumina, the white alumina in the solution. And for whatever reason, all the research that I have looked at indicates that we must remove the aluminum from the e-waste before any further treatment. I'm gonna get to the bottom of that. I just wanted to run that by you and see what you think, but this clip is gonna show that there is in fact a lot of aluminum in there because I dump it into a dish uh, potassium hydroxide solution. You see that? So there is a lot of aluminum in here most likely. Looks like a little piece of aluminum right there maybe. So that's something to think about. Do we want to take the advice of the people online who are saying that you have to get the aluminum out of this? You cannot have aluminum in e-waste. They say it becomes a problem down the line. I don't know, um, me and you need to discuss whether or not you're doing chemical treatment of the final stuff or if we're going to make anodes out of this. I don't know if the anode's a good idea. There's a very large amount of aluminum in some of this stuff. I'm gonna throw a little bit more powder in there. We have to discuss this. And figure out what we wanna do. They say extracting the aluminum from the precious metal ingots is uh, a bad idea. Get the aluminum out of the e-waste. I need you to do me a favor if you have the time and research this while I'm working on the projects I have going on the sidelines. If you don't have the time to do it, I understand that's fine. I see how busy you are.